Hello and welcome to episode five of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is a special two-parter episode on classics. So here's part one and stay tuned for part two. Hello, everyone. This is Tony the Movie Guy, and as always, Miss Money Any. Good evening, everyone. This is episode five, and uh, tonight we have another special guest. This is Juju, as I call her. Her name is Julie. <laughs> she used to be uh, my roommate for a few years. Say hi, Julie. Hi. Okay, good. So this episode, we're going to do a deep dive on classics. Now, Julie, why don't you... Uh, Give a little bit of an introduction <laughs> as to why classics is uh, particularly going to be entertaining. Absolutely. Well, for me, it's called classics. <laughs> as you might know, some of you guys know this story, but so Tony and I were roommates and he would always bring up different movies that we should see. You haven't seen that? Yeah. And so I would always hear, what? You haven't seen this movie? I can't believe it. It's a classic. <laughs> That's how I would say and it. And so thus began my, you know college education as you will on it's classic true. movies it's true yeah so we lived together um <laughs> as roomies for uh, i think like two two three years something and like that. uh you know i'm proud to say i think i introduced you to a lot of classics definitely which uh, she used to make fun of a lot of time oh is that a classic because then i would say that about like every movie <laughs> every movie became a classic like <laughs> you is it really that? <laughs> it's a classic uh, but i made you watch a lot of really good movies it did i never would have watched certain movies had it not been for you so we thought it would be really fun to kind of uh, go through classic movies. Now, here's the thing on this. I am not going to cover them all uh, because, we're, you know, when I... And again, remember, I don't do Google searches. I just started listing films out. And I, I, I'm actually spanning from, like, 1930 to present. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you'll see Good. that... Yeah, you'll see I'm actually <laughs> oh very much um, kind of an 80s and 90s child. Yeah. You know, a lot of my classic films come from that the last 30 years. But there's also a lot of films from the 60s and 70s. Not a lot before that period, but still some that I really want to mm -hmm. note. Yeah. Um, first of all, what we're going to discuss is what is a classic? What makes a classic? Um, you know, because I know we've joked about that a lot. We like, Ooh, it's it, a classic. You know? <laughs> and look, there are films that people find kind of dear to their heart and it has a personal reason why they love it you know but it's not necessarily a classic like empire empire records would be a perfect example <laughs> that film is so <laughs> dumb and so stupid i love it i love it i would love never it. call it a classic um yeah. the soundtrack is classic okay um yes. so i i'm looking but also there are traditional films that are considered like classics that i really don't like I, look i'm just gonna say up front citizen kane which is considered one of the best films of all time I do not consider a classic. I don't understand the appeal of that film. And I will tell you at this, it has something to do with the fact that that film is like 70 years old. Mm -hmm. And it was especially famous for its camera angles and a lot of grand ground breaking ways that it was made that mm -hmm. I guess I just don't really pick up now. You know, so I don't want to offend anyone, but you know, this obviously is my own list. Um, it's quite extensive and then we'll kind of go through them and then you can tell me others that sure. I may have missed them and we'll discuss them. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, good. Oh, one thing I wanted to say. So when I was a kid, when I was young, uh, my dad was something, I always have fun memories of this. My dad had all these VHSs of all the Gene Kelly movies. Um, oh, yeah. You know, uh, Brigadoon, American in Paris, On the Town, Singing in the Rain, of course. Um, I loved them. I watched those films on repeat and all the Marilyn Monroe movies. Yeah. Uh, Seven Year Itch, uh, Niagara. Some Like uh, a Hot. Some Like a Hot. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which I watched on repeat, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but again, you'll see some kind of dips and dives in the, the decades and time periods of films I consider classics. But okay. look, I'll just start. I'll go through this. Um, and it's pretty crazy how far this spans you know um oh so what i was gonna say is so what is a classic that's kind of the first thing so i, I took a look at that myself like what really is a, a classic movie because when i do my rating for films i mean that's five out of five and i don't rate 
a lot of films, five out of five. No, like even a film I love, I'll usually give it like a four, sometimes four and a half, mm -hmm. three and a half. Mm -hmm. There, it's far in between that it gets five out of five. So a classic to me is number one, first and foremost, you know, it touches me personally. I love the film personally. Something about it just completely immerses me in the experience and I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's the first thing, that's kind of obvious, right? Yeah. Um, the second thing, which I think is a real key factor, the more I look at it, is rewatchability. Mm. So like my wife can attest to this, like I, I watch more movies on repeat over and over again and I do new movies mm -hmm. because I'm, we've discussed this in some of the earlier yeah. episodes it's like I get disappointed with a lot of the new stuff coming out that's why I don't necessarily watch everything that comes out now so to me rewatchability is a huge factor and you know obviously I'm going to discuss different movies and you know that really has a lot to do with what I consider, consider a classic it never gets old it, you always pick up something new from it so that's a, a uh, something to me that's really important. Another is that it really holds up. Because mm -hmm. there are some films Has that, hold up. yeah, I loved when they came out and they don't hold up so much. We discussed yeah, in an earlier true. episode, Batman, the Tim Burton film. When that film came out, it was, it was a sensation. Mm -hmm. It was groundbreaking as, as a movie. You know, Jack Nicholson's performance, no one thought it could be topped. You know, I've rewatched that film and certain parts of it are fun, but it's a really corny film overall. <laughs> it, it just is. Yeah. It's just the it's truth. So, the, you know, or Scarface with Al Pacino, certain parts of that film are amazing, but overall it doesn't hold up so well. So if the film really holds up to me, that is another factor. And then um, obviously something that I think we would take into account is the skill of the film in terms of acting performances, direction, cinematography, things like that, that obviously is an, a, an important, yeah, yeah. The, the music, yeah. that is an important factor. So as a summary, to me, what defines a classic is, you know, I, I love the movie, the rewatchability factor of it, I don't even know if that's a word, rewatchability. It's a word now. It is, I just coined <laughs> it. <laughs> Three, that it holds up, and four, the, you know, the skill of the art of the acting, the di directing, cinematography. Would you agree? I would agree. Uh, just to add one more point, too, for me, at least, it's got to have a point of nostalgia involved. Okay, good. Bringing it That's back to something. That's kind of like holds up to me, the holds, holds up Holds up, but also brings it back to that personal thing that touches you, you know. So I it kind of mixes in with that. Yeah. You agree, yeah. Yanni? Totally agree. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Those all hold up for me. Perfect. Good. So... Without any further ado, I'm going to go through this. This is going to be fun. Okay, so I already said, so like Citizen Kane, I'm not a big fan of. Yeah. I know people love that movie. I'm sure in schools there are things you could dissect about it that you could teach. I, and by the way, I, I tried to rewatch it a few months ago. I just, I found it really boring. I never saw it, so. Okay. Never saw it, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the most acclaimed films of all time. Maybe I awesome yeah. Wells. Maybe we should. <laughs> Give it a try, you know. Here, okay, so here's the other thing, and again, this is spoilers, but this is a film that's like 70 years old. You know, Understood. the famous Rosebud, you know, which is his sled, and you don't really find out until the end of the movie that this guy who becomes this billionaire and, you know, at the end of the movie, the one thing that was dear to his heart as he died on his deathbed, he said, Rosebud. And you find out at the end of the film, that's his sled when he was a kid and the thing he mm. cared about. You know, I already knew about that. You know, so it didn't have any impact in me, mm. uh, for me when I watched it. You know, another film is Gone with the Wind. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I don't like that movie. Wow. Okay. I don't. You know, I, I know, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's about all I know. Um, I've watched it. It's too esoteric. It's way too long for me. I'm not a big fan. Since I brought it up, are you guys fans of that film? I am. I like it. I think it's a good period piece. I think the costuming is great. But aside from the fact that it's super long, that's my <laughs> it only is, it is qualm with long. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not a fan. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of move on from there. Yeah. Okay, good. So Wizard of Oz. To me, oh, yeah. that's a classic. That's Judy Garland. A classic. That's a film. That, now, that film came out in 1939. Okay. Wow. Um, if, I don't know if you remember this. Um, it starts in black and white, then it moves mm -hmm. into color. It's got song. The witch is like so spooky. The flying monkeys. The monkeys. <laughs> Wizard of Oz is such a timeless classic to me. Yeah. And it really holds up. It's an incredible movie. Would yeah. you agree? I'll give you that. Yeah. You'll I, give I it to me? <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> I must have rewatched that film. It was one of those that um, I rewatched probably at least 
30, 40 times as a kid. And I remember yeah. why I was And it's been a it. few years, actually, since I've seen it. But I've watched it maybe 10 times. And it, it's a magical film. And what's incredible is that film came out in 1939. It's uh, and it's an incredible film. movie. Wow. So I absolutely consider that a classic. Okay, so I'm going, I'm jumping to the 50s. Okay. Good. Um, I have Singing in the Rain. Um, I love this movie. It's probably my favorite musical of all time. It's Gene Kelly. I absolutely love this movie. I love the songs. Uh, make them laugh. Make them laugh. You know, uh, I love that. Have you guys seen Singing in the Rain? Haven't seen it. No, the song. I know the song, but I haven't oh, seen good it. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I know that song. It's too. I know more than one song on it. Oh, you know, my God. It's terrible. Tony, this is why... You, I'm starting oh, and a I'm movie singing list these of songs. I should watch. be singing. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. Someone else sing because I cannot we sing. Talked about you and singing. <laughs> I know that seems we to get be to like, enjoy it though. This seems to be a plot device of these episodes as I just yeah. break out into song and I'm terrible. Um, okay, so I already told you my dad had all the um, you know VHSs of Gene Kelly. I watched all of those movies. Singing in the rain. I have watched maybe a hundred times. That oh. movie is magical. I absolutely love it um it's a, it's a classic film it's a classic it really is a classic yeah you get to say that it's a classic <laughs> i love the way you say it. it's better than me it's better than you classic okay um and again the, the the i really had to kind of go through the list and shorten it because i had so many and i did it against those four points that i mentioned earlier okay. the next one is rebel without a cause mm. james dean absolutely i I love this movie, and I'm going to tell you, I only discovered that film four or five years ago. Wow. Obviously, I knew about it, but I only watched it four or five years ago, and here's what's strange. Again, that came out 60 years ago. Yeah. I was transfixed by the film, and particularly by James Dean's performance. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was like, you know, there's a few people like him, like Heath Ledger, that just yeah. have that magnetism. Oh, that film is phenomenal, and also it's, it's quite emotional it has a real depth yeah. and you know it's a very heartbreaking movie and a lot of that film is also um the whole second or third act is in the griffith observatory, observatory yeah. yeah which is kind of cool because cool i've been for to us the, being yeah we live Angeles, like 20 minutes know. away from I it i actually have to really quickly throw in an anecdote there because that's dear to my heart for two reasons one it james dean was my mother's favorite actor rebel without a cause and all the james dean movies is what i was he only did on. like four or five yeah, movies the, yeah we had them all and we would rewatch them over and over and that was my favorite one so when i came here for the first time to la i stood by the statue up by the observatory a sort of a commemorative thing and then because of that that's where my husband proposed to me oh Aww. wow Hi. look at that well anyway. let me let me tell you something that's funny about that here's how i went on a james Dean kick. It was about four years ago, um, and I was traveling around America. And um, I, actually, I was in Canada. I was in Vancouver, and I watched a TV uh, movie with James Franco playing James Dean. Oh, wow. Which, by the way, was fantastic. Really? And that really got me like interested. And then I watched all the James Dean movies. Oh, okay. You know, East of Eden, and I think Giant. Um, and they were good, but the one that just stuck yeah. with me was Rebel Without a Cause. And I've watched it maybe about three or four times since then. Mm -hmm. it, it's phenomenal. I mean, if you haven't seen Rebel Without a Cause, you have to watch yeah, it. Please because you'll understand it. why Absolutely. he's an icon. Yeah. You know, he, he just exudes cool. Definitely. Um, anyway, so I, I, have, I have that for sure. Okay, so now I have one of the Marilyn Monroe classics. Um, it was actually kind of hard for me to list which one because i love gentlemen prefer blondes i love seven year itch specifically because it's got that famous scene where her dress is blowing up under the oh yeah the <laughs> radiator thing you know that's very famous um but i had to go with some like it hot i would agree yeah I, yeah I think it's just it's amazing and it's also got i think jack lemon and walter matu it's a comedy and musical uh, that film is fantastic and it's monroe at her best but it's a total classic film. yeah you agree? I definitely agree. Okay, here's another movie that I just watched last year, and again, it blew me away. This is a Marlon Brando picture on the waterfront. Hmm, Have you ever seen that? No. Oh, my God. So it's it's considered one of Marlon Brando's best films. Mm -hmm. um, I think he won an Oscar for it. This is young, hot Marlon Brando. This isn't <laughs> Godfather. Not Godfather. You know, yeah, this is like <laughs> hunky. Oh, my. This is another, like, you understand why he's an icon. He is absolutely fantastic in this film and it has one of those most famous quotable lines i could have been a contender oh, it comes that's from where that, that film. comes from yeah so i should put that on my list oh, it's to movies so to see. good it's, it's really old it's it's fan he is phenomenal and the movie what blows me away about films like this is that's like almost 70 years old and the film holds up 
it's so well done. It's really, his performance has been fantastic. Yeah. I think Eva Marie Saint is, is the girl in it. She's gorgeous. Um, it, it's a great movie. And it's quite heartbreaking, you know? It's a, a fantastic movie. Okay, the next one I have, and we, d we touched upon this in an earlier episode, is Ben-Hur, Charlton mm. Heston. I saw that in history class. <laughs> oh, did you what? Did you like it? From what I remember, yes, I liked it. <laughs> From what I remember. <laughs> it's a very long movie. I haven't movie. seen it since, but... Okay. Well, here's what I told uh, Yenny, which is really interesting. They remade that movie last year with all the modern technology and special effects. I it can't believe they did that. It was awful. Fucking terrible. Okay. Um, and the original film, which is like 70 years old, still holds up. The, the chariot race is, is still That's like, awesome. That's what stands out most vivid, you know, yeah. vividly mm -hmm. is um, that um, race. But I really, it's actually a kind of a religious movie as well, but um, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a great film um, and it's kind of an epic movie. It's definitely a classic. Um, okay, here's the next one. I just watched this yesterday mm -hmm. and I put it on the list because it's this good. Because now look, I'm turning the movie guy, but I haven't seen every film. <laughs> you can't have seen all of them. Okay. So. But here is how crazy I am. Like, I've taken the 500 movies you must watch before you die list that came out in Empire, and I've literally gone through it and highlighted every movie I have. <laughs> Are they seen. all highlighted at this point? Well, I've probably watched maybe three quarters, but I haven't oh, seen wow. all of them. I mean, there's so <laughs> many movies. Um, but this movie is called The Bridge Over the River Kwai. It's one of those mm. David Lean epics with Alec Guinness, who you will know as Obi-Wan Kenobi from oh. the Star Wars movies. Uh, he won an Oscar. Uh, this film is like three hours long. It's a brilliant war movie um and again it just it really it blew me away with uh how in depth it was the story is so epic on mm -hmm. such a grand scale um the performances are fantastic um i highly recommend it i, I know you kind of shrug because it's a war movie um and it is uh, you know it's about like, these british uh soldiers who are stuck in like a POW camp, camp and they have to build a bridge but then there's this whole other intricate plot that comes in and man it was a, it was really good I loved it and I was like wow that's going on the list okay. it good. was phenomenal I'm and, putting on my and list it's considered a classic and now I see why yeah Okay, I'm jumping to the 60s. Okay, this film is one of my most beloved movies of all time. If I did, you know, I'm sure one day I'll do a, my favorite movies, which is so hard to do. Um, <laughs> this is The Graduate. Okay, now that's one that you okay. made me see. Correct. I, started I the, love this I movie. I can't believe you haven't seen it. But you're that's right. I made you watch and that. And I have a note here. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, and I Sarah, saw that with right? you, and yeah. that's on my list now as well. Okay, so it, let me tell you something about uh, The Graduate. It was directed by Mike Nichols, uh, and it starred... Um, Dustin Hoffman. This is a fun fact you might, guys might not know. That film was groundbreaking for changing the game on a leading man. Before that, it was all bravado, you know, like your Robert Redfords, your macho guys. And mm. then came along this like short Jewish kind of odd looking quirky guy who, and it cap catapulted him to like leading man status. Yeah. Um, it was unusual for that time and age apparently to have someone like Dustin Hoffman in that role. And can you imagine anyone else in it? Not really. It, it's that film. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've watched that film a hundred times. It's an absolute masterpiece. Um, it's also got um, Anne Bancroft, who obviously plays Mrs. Robinson. Mm -hmm. I mean, that song alone is... Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson. You don't like it? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can sing. I need to let someone else sing. Anyway, so the soundtrack... Julie do the song. Yeah, Sound of Silence comes from like that. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack is uh, Simon and Garfunkel. So that alone has become legendary. Um, Anne Bancroft as Mrs. Robinson, her performance. Uh, Catherine Ross, who's the daughter, mm -hmm. who I thought was beautiful. Yeah. Um, that film is fantastic. And obviously it's really, you know, you're trying to seduce me, Mrs. Robinson. That line is famous. And the ending of that movie... Uh, I don't know if you remember. They're in the it. car. It, well, when he breaks up the wedding, oh, yeah. and they they go off and they run off in the bus, and it has this haunting last frame. They're all kind of exhilarated, and then you can see reality is setting in on them as they're kind of sitting next to each other. Uh, she's in her wedding dress still, and they're driving on, the, and you can kind of <laughs> it just not, hits them. It's kind of melancholy. The ending. Um, anyway, that film is, I love it. You have to watch that movie if you haven't seen it. Um, and you guys clearly agree. So, Okay, I have 2001 A Space Odyssey. Never seen that. Never seen it. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something. Watch it. It's Stanley Kubrick. Um, I don't even remember the actors in it. The, the thing I remember the most is the computer, Hal. 
Um, it's a wacky movie. Here's why I really respect and appreciate that movie is visually it's stunning. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, I don't understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> well, it's a Kubrick, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, well, There's you know, not usually a lot of sense. To be expected. Yeah. <laughs> but visually it's incredible. I've watched it a few times. I remember as a kid, I didn't get it at all. I watched it last year and I really appreciated the visuals and I, I was kind of entertained and, you know, magnetized by that, but I was still like, what the hell is going on? So it's <laughs> something I would definitely uh, watch and I understand why it stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Psycho. So Ye uh, Yenny and I discussed this in an earlier episode. She's never seen the original. She saw the uh... freaking Vince Vaughn <laughs> remake from, you know, 1999. Because <laughs> I've never seen the original. I was like, oh, this wasn't bad. With Anne Hesh's butthole. I don't know if you've seen. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen? Uh, oh, you, there's a Hollywood Babylon episode oh. with Ralph Garman and um, Kevin Smith where um, in, there's a scene where she plays the famous scene where, yeah. you know, the <laughs> Mm -hmm. in the shower Shazzy. and apparently there's like you can see her butthole of you know crazy weird people who like freeze frame it and yeah. go in so they have a whole segment on that it's hilarious no, but anyway I mean, I've seen obviously a lot of clips of the original Psycho and it, yeah. Alfred Hitch Hitchcock is, is a genius and I and I am sure it's amazing right so that's a legendary uh, performance from sorry Ant that phrase Ant is gonna haunt me oh <laughs> Anne Hesh's butthole yes <laughs> you should check out the Hollywood yeah. Babylon episode no so <laughs> I mean that's <laughs> So that's Anthony Perkins. Um, yeah, Alfred Hitchcock. It, it's an absolute classic. I, I love that movie. I think it's so well done. Uh, I've watched it many times. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, here's a film that you probably haven't seen that I think is phenomenal. And I've seen a lot of classic Western movies. And I only watched this one first a few years ago. And I've seen it two or three times. It's called um, Once Upon a Time in the West. Have you no, ever seen that? No. So it's a Sergio Leone movie. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He's the guy who did all the spaghetti westerns with Clint okay. Eastwood. And, um, you know, obviously in like the 50s, 60s, 70s, that genre of westerns was huge. Not so much now. Uh, that film is phenomenal. It has Charles Bronson in it as mm. the uh, main protagonist. And it has Henry Fonda, who was cast against type at the time. He was this big, like, One of those big hero. macho guys. He's the antagonist. He's the villain. And he's chilling in it. That film is really good. I love it. It's really long. It's an epic Western. Uh, just the introduction, the, the first 10, 15 minutes, this big showdown. It's a beautiful film. I absolutely love it. Okay, cool. Uh, following that, I have another Sergio Leon classic, which is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Mm. So that's Clint, oh, yeah. that's Clint Eastwood. Uh, that's probably most well known for the music score. So I don't start singing. Does someone want to do No. <laughs> you don't know the score? <laughs> No, how's it go? I'm just gonna continue, no, Tony. Please, know? let's entertain oh, the listeners. You guys don't like that. Huh? I think it's entertaining the listeners. <laughs> um, anyway, it's got that really famous music score. Um, I think that's what it's most famous for. But uh, it's a great film. The, the performances are, are absolutely excellent. Yeah. Okay, here's another one, and this film is beautiful. Um, I watched it when I was young. Don't think I fully appreciated it. Saw it again last year. Blew me away. Lawrence of Arabia. Well, that's an incredible film. Have you seen that, I've Juju? Seen no, I haven't I seen it. You've seen it? It's a beautiful film. My, my, another one my mom had me watch several times. It was amazing. Yeah, so there's a, a director very famous called David Lean who was known for his epic grand scale movies of that time. Okay. Um, like The Bridge Over the River Kwai um, and uh, this one as well, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. And it's also the film that introduced the world to Peter O'Toole, um, who's a fantastic British actor who died a Striking few years back. Striking blue eyes, yeah. Um, yeah, his eyes are mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. And also it's one of the, it's considered one of the biggest snubs that he didn't win an Oscar for that film. Mm -hmm. um, that film is beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's so grand, and his performance is absolutely terrific. Um, you know, I, I really want to. I hear sometimes they show it at the uh, Egyptian theater on, on the big screen, and oh, I'd cool. love to watch it on the big screen. I think it would be so epic, but it's absolutely a classic. It's fantastic. Okay, uh, I have Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. You've ever seen that? Another one I nope. haven't seen. Okay, that's Robert Redford, Paul Newman. Okay. Um, it's kind of a Western, and actually it's Catherine Ross as well. She's the girl. She's also the, the daughter from The Graduate. Right. Fantastic film. It's very famous for its ending. Spoilers, this film is like 50, 60 years old, uh, where they're stuck in a little hut, and the entire, I think it's the Mexican or Colombian army, mm -hmm. is outside, and then they come outside, guns are blazing, and it freeze frames. Basically, they get blown to pieces. <laughs> um, it's a great movie. Their performances, that's Newman and Redford at their peak best, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a great 
buddy movie, western. It's, it's a great film. Cool. Definitely a classic. Okay, this film I haven't seen a lot. I've only watched it two or three times because it's kind of rough. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely a classic. It's Bonnie and Clyde. Mm. That's Warren, okay. B- uh, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. Yeah. And also Gene Hackman. Uh, one of his oh, first movies. Isn't. That's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think he's the brother or the friend or something. Um, so obviously that film is about those two who go on like a killing spree and a mob, you know, a robber, robbery spree and they were like young lovers. And that film is groundbreaking for its violence. Right. Because it has an extremely graphic scene, especially for the time where uh, they get raided by the cops. Spoilers, this film is 60 years old. and it's. <laughs> I a, think you're allowed to It's a true point. story. I'm yeah. totally going to watch this. Anyway, my type of thing. they get riddled to people. Pieces. Oh, just good. there's your spoiler. There's, there's shot my spoiler. to pieces. <laughs> I've watched um, the movie now. No, no, Thanks. watch it. Still watch you'll it. You'll still appreciate it. Um, and it, that well, was kind of like Thelma and Louise. You know right. the ending, but I still watched it, yeah. even though I hadn't seen it. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, when I'm when I'm talking about films that have been around for like years or decades, I'm going to go into spoilers. Yeah. When I review like a brand new movie, then out of yeah. respect, Lips I'm not going to discuss. Sealed. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I won't go into spoilers. So anyway, Bonnie and Clyde. It's definitely worth watching at least once. I don't think it's a movie you would necessarily watch over, so I know it's that one point of the classics, but I still consider it a classic because it really um, stuck in my memory. Okay, good. I'm going to keep going. So you guys are getting a a real big list here of movies to watch, right? (laughs) Yeah, I have my paper and pen handy. Listeners, if you don't have it, get your paper and pen handy. Yeah, list these out, man. This is an education. Classic movie night. (laughs) Okay, good. So here's my last film of the the 1960s. And again, remember, this is by in no way a complete list. Right. These are my uh, list of classics spanning this this time frame. Um, Okay, The Great Escape. Have you ever seen that movie? Um, it's a war film, so you may no. not have. Steve McQueen, it's most notable for his epic motorcycle. motorcycle. Oh, yeah. No, he's in a bike and he escapes. Um, it, I actually love the entire movie. Charles Bronson's in it as well. Again, uh, you know, a lot of these films that came out earlier are quite depressing. <laughs> um, it's quite a depressing movie. It's not really, it doesn't really have a happy ending. But man, that film was amazing. It's, it's an epic movie. Uh, Steve McQueen is at his most Steve McQueenist. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he's fantastic, um, but that's definitely a classic movie. Okay, cool. All right, 1970s. So I have to start the 70s, even though this came out towards the end of the 70s. Coincidentally, this movie came out on the year that I was born, 1977. So now all the listeners Ooh. know how old I am. <laughs> um, Star Wars: A New Hope. Of so, course. I mean, obviously, this film was groundbreaking as a, you know, if you look into the history behind that film it's really fascinating because a lot of the studios didn't want to make it they thought it was hokey ridiculous and and now it is what it is today so thank god george lucas made it so i've got to say god bless him no matter what people say about the prequels god bless Absolutely. george lucas for what he yeah, has brought us what he's Come contributed on. to our society and culture <laughs> yeah you know I, I understand kingdom of the crystal skull for yeah. indiana jones and the prequels yes that's <laughs> tainted a, a little bit but the guy is he's a legend his original um, work. yeah so look i mean we'll probably do a an episode on star wars just talking about that but yeah. a new hope is phenomenal i've watched it a hundred times i'm a huge star wars fan you guys have seen i it. put all three of those right. um on my list yeah, yeah so the Absolutely. the other two just so you know came out in the 80s right and actually i consider empire strikes back the superior film yeah that film is phenomenal that was my favorite um, but I, I absolutely, absolutely um, love Star Wars, obviously. So that's got to be on there. Okay, good. So let's see what else I got for the 70s. I've got, okay, The Godfather. Duh. So have you guys seen The Godfather? I haven't seen it. I what? know many scenes in it. I know. Julie, get out. The Godfather. No. I can't even do the accent. No. Um, I'll make him an offer I can't refuse, but I can't do the, the voice. I have seen it, um, and I liked it, but um, yeah. I mean, that's the one with the scene with the horse's head in it, right? That's right. See, yeah. so it's I, funny I that people that remember. Scene, <laughs> yeah. And I've never seen it. So, so, okay. I mean, the cast is phenomenal. Obviously, Marlon Brando won the Oscar as The Godfather, but it's Al Pacino. Uh, it's James Caan. Um, it's, uh, it's just got a phenomenal cast. I don't remember all the actors off the top of my head. Um, and, I mean, it's considered the greatest um, mobster movie of all time. Honestly, I put Goodfellas ahead of it, mm-hmm. uh, but I would put it right after it. Um, it... It's a very long film. You know, like the beginning is like a 45-minute wedding, um, but it's fantastic. I mean, it's beautiful to look at, incredible performances, very violent, but the story is is uh, 
incredible and I, I understand completely why it's a classic yeah i've probably watched it about five times you know it takes a bit to get through would you but... say that still holds up absolutely it, it does absolutely it's a f you've got to watch the godfather it's a fun Nominal <laughs> movie. It's Francis Ford Coppola. That's yeah. you know that's considered like his epic you know piece of work. Um, okay, Jaws. Now I'll tell you. Gonna something. need a bigger boat. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> need a bigger Jaws. boat. Have you seen um, Jaws recently? Not recently. I have. So I actually don't think that holds up as well, but it's absolutely still a classic. I mean, I've watched it many times. I love it when I was young. It re and I know it did it did this to everyone. It made me scared yeah, to go water. in the water. Yeah. yeah, you know, and it was also yeah. a big. That Steven Spielberg. It was a big blockbuster. Uh, Roy Schneider, Richard Dreyfuss. I actually uh, uh, watched it at an outdoor movie. I'd say it was not last year, but the year before. And for me, it actually did hold up really well. Good. I was still terrified. I mean, it was also on a big screen, so that Could you helped. imagine watching that, like, in the water? Like they do in Austin? Yeah, oh, I heard no. they do that. They do screenings oh, of it, no. and you're in the you're water. After I saw it, listen, oh, I had God. a swimming pool in my backyard oh. when I saw it. I wouldn't go in it for weeks. <laughs> yeah. My swimming pool, not just right. the ocean. I know. So that alone... The that's how much it impacted the tubes me. Right. And so it's going to kill you. That alone is a testament to the impact of that movie. Uh, and it was considered one of the first true blockbusters it really put spielberg on the map um i mean it, it's a great film great performances and what's so funny is like the shark it's so hokey now when you watch it and there's <laughs> there's legendary stories about that like they couldn't get the mechanical shark yeah. working but uh i don't know it's just it still works on every level so yeah, it's definitely agreed. a classic okay this is a personal favorite for me and a lot of people i think love this one flew over the cuckoo's mm, nest um, yeah yeah i actually played the lead in a in a play when i was young as well um and i read that <laughs> book many times uh jack nicholson won the oscar Come that on. film is absolutely incredible the the lady uh, i'm afraid i don't remember her name she won an oscar too plays Ner nurse ratchet mm -hmm. oh my god she was incredible um the, the chief the indian it's a heartbreaking movie so heartbreaking. um really phenomenal piece of filmmaking now it's a it's a tough movie to tough, watch tough movie. um it's you know, I very say sad so. yeah you have to uh, but it's definitely Great a classic. Routine. You've both seen it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so Actually, very you look depressed right? just thinking about uh, it. I did. <laughs> like, I mean, come I on went, I went back to the end of the movie in my mind. I only saw it a couple of years ago, and it, oh, so heartbreaking. It is. But yeah, but Jack Nicholson was He's amazing. incredible. Amazing. He won an Oscar. He, uh, so. To me, it's one of the most, uh, that had an indelible impression on me as a very young boy that yeah. movie i watched that way too young i've seen it many times incredible uh, it's incredible message in terms of what yeah. electric shock will do yeah you know and psychiatric and abuse yeah. as well i mean it, it's very impactful you have to watch that movie here's another one you probably haven't seen um but man this movie had an impact on me it's a uh, deliverance have you ever seen that movie no. mm -hmm. it's john voigt burt reynolds uh this movie is a uh, a tough movie. Um, I watched it again way too young. I've seen it many times. This is, uh, I think it was very controversial at the time. It's one of the, uh, it's about these like city guys who go off to like the mountains to go like hunting for a weekend. Mm -hmm. And they basically get like mixed up with like these crazy hillbillies. And it has a very disturbing male rape scene in it. That mm. at this came out in like the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, it's Burt Reynolds. I think it's his best performance aside from Boogie Nights. Right. Uh, he's fantastic in this film. Uh, and it's the story of survival. It, I don't know. That film had a real impact. I absolutely consider it a classic. I have actually, strangely enough, watched it a few times. Um, but it's very unsettling. Um, that was called what? Deliverance? Deliverance. Okay. It's, oh, that movie is very impactful. Okay, Clockwork Orange. That's a <laughs> messed up movie. I'm sorry. Yeah, he hasn't seen it. It's Stanley Kubrick. You haven't seen Clockwork no, Orange? No, that, that was on my she list. She shamedly turns away. Okay, Yanni, that's, that's a fucked up movie. <laughs> it is, it is. Um... What is I, the, the subject matter? Well, it's it's Malcolm McDowell, um, and he plays Alex. The, these droogs. It's it's just such you know it's that hard film. To explain. Yeah, think, it's an you're art just gonna need piece. To watch it. Yeah, it, the, well, I would consider an art yeah, piece. Yeah, the style, the music. So he's uh, the, even would I the consider even a classic though. Oh, absolutely. Even okay. the I think it's uh, Kubrick's best film. Okay. It, because again, even though it's so disturbing and unsettling, I've watched it many times. Even the way they speak is weird. You know, they say like ultra violence and they they use weird dialogue in the way mm. they speak, but it's basically Their own language. Uh, the film is he he's like just a psychotic like gang member kid 
And then he gets arrested and then they do all these experiments on him oh, wow. and release him out into the public. So then when he tries to do something um, naughty, <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> word, it, it, it almost like gives him like electroshock. Like it oh, makes wow. him sick. Uh, yeah. It drives him mad. Uh, the film is phenomenal, very unsettling. Um, and even though it's so, you know, it's sets and everything are so old, uh, it kind of works for just how twisted it is. Uh, and the, the central performance is fantastic. I don't know. I, I, I think that film is, is genius. Um, but yes, it's very unsettling. Um, okay, let's see what else I have here. Oh, Chinatown. Have you ever seen that? Mm-mm, these weird, obscure no. movies. <laughs> weird? That's Francis Ford Coppola and Faye of... Dunaway and Jack Nicholson. And uh, just so you know, Chinatown has been taught in uh, colleges and schools all over the world. Mm-hmm. It's considered a damn near perfect script. Wow. Um, okay, I'm know, adding that to the list, people. And that's the famous line, forget it, Jake, it's Chinatown. You know, um, which I guess you've no idea. <laughs> we're like, we're like Tony, um, we should right. know this. Okay. It's it's a great movie. It's a, like a film noir, um, you know, drama thriller. It's fantastic. I love that movie. You definitely should check it out. Okay, I remember I, some of these are quite guy oriented, um, but that they, these are true classics, truly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I have Apocalypse Now. You ever seen that? Oh, God, no. It's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> of course, it's on your list, though. <laughs> it's Marlon Brando. It's Martin Sheen. Um, it's uh, Again, that's uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Um, the production of that film apparently is legendary because Martin Sheen had a heart attack, almost oh, wow. died. There are documentaries about the making of this film. That is a... It, wow. It's a war movie, but it's in, it's an Which incredible I, movie, I, I, and it's an incredible story of like the descent into madness. Um, I highly recommend it for all you guys out there. And hey, if the girls like it too, check it out. Um, mm. It's definitely a classic. Um, okay, Enter the Dragon. Okay, I'm a Bruce Lee nerd. <laughs> I watched all the Bruce Lee movies. Enter the Dragon was kind of his big international mainstream hit. Mm. You know, it's not subtitled. Uh, it's fantastic. It's the one where he's got the claw scratches on him. Mm. Why? Oh yeah. You guys can't see what I just did, but um He did um, some kung fu. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's definitely a classic uh, for any uh, Bruce Lee fan, you, you know, you you've seen it many times. Um but I had to put it on there. Okay, good. Greece. We'll all probably of agree. Course. There we go. I agree. <laughs> okay, so I mean I grew up watching that. Me too. Probably Me too. two or three times yeah, a week. I least. remember watching it all the time. I love it. I you know, you know, Summer I think I've seen it 15 times. So fast. Summer loving had me a black. I met a girl. Okay, we're done. Okay, we're done. Um, anyway. I like how you did the girl part <laughs> and I did the guy Amazing. part. <laughs> oh, at least I said I met a girl. I didn't say I met a boy. That would have been really embarrassing. Well, then you started. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, Grease to me, uh, that's a great example of a film that really does hold up, in my oh, opinion. And it's a musical. Yeah, the, the songs hold up. Uh, the acting, I don't find it tacky. I, I love it. John yeah. Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, Newton John. their chemistry is amazing. And Rizzo, which is played by Stockard Channing, yeah. uh, is fantastic. Um, that film's fantastic. It's a real feel-good movie. It's so fun. It's so magical. Um, we all agree. Right? We agree on that one. Okay, oh, perfect. 100%. Okay, you're not going to agree on this next one Uh-oh. at all. Okay, Taxi Driver. <laughs> this I is... haven't seen it. God, you haven't I seen know. it either, right? Okay, well, really, you should check. Look, a lot of these films are quite solemn. <laughs> uh, Taxi Driver is a groundbreaking movie. It was Robert De Niro. It was one of his most acclaimed roles. Mm-hmm. It, Jodie Foster, as a young girl, she's 13 in this movie. She plays like a 13 or a 12-year-old prostitute. Wow. Um, and uh, it's directed by Martin Scorsese. It's a very unsettling film. And that's obviously, uh, this is where the famous line, you're talking to me? You're talking to you're me. You're talking to me. No one else here. <laughs> oh, you're talking to me. I see, I know the line. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. This is why it these films... It makes its way are, into our culture. That's why these films are classics. Yeah. They really are. That's true. Okay, I'll move on. Um, Rocky. Okay, yeah. Have you seen the first one? I have one? seen that one. Look, I'll admit, the first one doesn't hold up so well, but it really... I mean, it started the whole franchise. I mean, he got Oscar nominated mm-hmm. two years ago for Creed. I mean, that you know that character has just stayed yeah. in everyone's universes for like Full 40 circle. years. Um, you know, Adrian! Adrian! <laughs> that's where that comes <laughs> from. Um, I, I mean, that's like the classic story of the underdog. I, I love Rocky. I think it's fantastic. Sylvester Stallone. And a lot of people don't know that he wrote that movie, you know, at one best picture. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously he started it. I didn't know it. that. Yeah. Well, there you yeah, go. anyway, fantastic movie. Okay, so I'm just going to mention a few here. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, that's Spielberg, Richard Dreyfuss. It's a 
you know, science fiction alien movie. Okay. I like that movie. I don't think it holds up so well. Um, I watched it last year again, and I still enjoyed it. But, you know, hmm. and here's another one that, you know, there's two here I'm going to say that probably will piss some people off. One is The Exorcist. That's considered, like, the most famous horror movie of all time, William Friedkin. Um, I've watched, I remember. I tried to watch that. Well, here's what's weird about it. So I I tried to watch The Exorcist. This is a true story from 2009 (laughs) through to 2015. I started watching it about 10 times through those years. And I finally finished it, finished watching it in 2015. The first half of it is so slow and boring to me. And the second half is good. Um, Mm. I do enjoy it and I understand why, you know, how it's very shocking and the story is quite profound. Um, I I don't fully understand why it gets so much acclaim. I I don't. So I know, I'm sorry. I will probably upset some people because it's considered like the best. Um, I don't think it holds up so well. Um, and then here's the other, uh, here's another one. Annie Hall, Woody Allen. I love that movie. Okay. So just so you know, I'm not a huge Woody Allen fan. Actually, there's oh, only one. There's only one movie of his that I truly love, which is Midnight, Midnight in, in Paris. Paris. I love that movie. Yeah. I, I haven't seen. I mean, he's done like forty or fifty movies apparently, and I've yeah. maybe seen like seven or ten. Um, Annie Hall, why don't you talk about it a little well, bit? Well, I'll just tell you the the performance that I really enjoyed, and that was Diane Keaton. Of course, she I mean, won the Oscar. That movie made me fall in love with her. There's right. a ton of movies that she's out, and if I hadn't really seen that, I wouldn't have been as invested in her later movies. But um, it was quirky. It was charming. I, I really enjoyed the kind of dryness of it, right. um, which is, quite honestly, a lot of Woody Allen films are like that. Yeah. So. so probably the only thing I remember from it is her performance. She was quite charming and quirky and I, what she wore and stuff. I think here's one thing I don't like. I can't stand how jittery and stuffy <laughs> and insecure Woody Allen is. I can't stand that. And I don't like the way he portrays that in his movies. It bugs me. Um, I just found that movie kind of slow, a bit pretentious. Um, I thought she was good in it. She won an Oscar. Uh, again, I'll, I'll upset some people. I understand it's a classic. This is just for me personally. Sure. Um, okay, and the last one for the 70s is Alien. Um, Alien is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. And it's quite scary. You know, it's Ridley Scott, Sigourney Weaver, uh, you know, in one of the most incredible female, you know, heroin roles yeah. as uh, Ripley. Um, it's very slow, you know, um, and the sequel by James Cameron, which came out later, to me is far superior. And it's the one I'll go back to and watch again and again. Um, but it's a good movie. Okay, good. So I'm going to go into the 80s. So the 80s and 90s is where 80s. it gets really fun for me. Because, I me mean, too. again, <laughs> obviously I'm an 80s and 90s kid. This is where I'll pipe in more. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny. When I look at my list, they're much bigger for the 80s and 90s. So, okay, good. So I had Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Look, I, I actually love Return of the Jedi. Um, it does have some faults in it. Um, Empire Strikes Back to me is an That's almost incredible. perfect yeah. movie. It's got one of the biggest twists. Again, spoiler. <laughs> look. <laughs> I am, I am your father. <laughs> no! It can't be true! Whiny. No! <laughs> no! Anyway. Um, but at the funny time, enough, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, and, and also the other great line yeah. is, uh, I love you. I know. <laughs> you know, he ad-libbed that Han Solo with yeah. Princess Leia. What were you going to say? I, I had only seen the first two, and I actually saw the Return of the Jedi with you right. <laughs> at the apartment during yeah. another movie night. And that was another one. I can't believe you haven't seen it. You it's know, a classic. Finishing <laughs> the, the trilogy at the time. Yeah. So Yeah, so I, I re-watch the Star Wars movies um, at least a couple times a year. And I remember a couple years ago, which I can't even believe I did this. You know, and I we have, Danny and I have about four or five sets of the Star Wars movies <laughs> in different formats. It's like kind of ridiculous. But there's one I have, or it's maybe one she has. It has a nine-hour documentary oh behind gosh. the making. I and watched, have you seen it? I watched the entire thing and I was enthralled the whole time. Wow. wow. This was a couple of years ago. It was amazing. So I didn't even know which format that came in. It's one of the box sets. Uh, it was amazing. Anyway, I don't need to say more about Star Wars. That'll be an entirely okay. different episode. Yeah, we'll do a whole <laughs> Star Wars episode. Okay, stand by me. I oh, love yes, this movie. movie. Rob Reiner, River film. Phoenix, yeah, God bless it. him. Yeah. Um, and it's got Corey, is it Corey Feldman or Corey Haim? I, I think, think it's, it's Corey Feldman. Feldman. Corey Feldman. Yeah, Corey oh, Feldman. Yeah. Um, and who's the main guy? Will Wheaton. Yeah. Um, it, it's Jerry O'Connell. Keeper Sutherland's in it. The soundtrack is beautiful. Yeah. Here's the funny thing about Stand By Me. Uh, that film is actually on a lot of like 
films that children must watch. You, your mm-hmm. children, it's an R-rated movie. It's quite a heavy movie. It it's about a, a bunch of kids movie. that go off to, to find, a, find a dead body. Yeah. You know, it's got a lot of swearing and stuff. But what's funny is I watched that movie when I was like eight or nine. Yeah. And I've, I've watched it again and again, and it holds up so well. It, it's a very melancholy film. Uh, it's a Stephen King adaption, and Stephen King has said it's the film adaption of, you know, sorry, an adaption of one of his books to films that he's the most proud of. He, yeah. he loves it. Uh, that movie is beautiful. I love that movie. Yeah, it's and beautiful. I actually would recommend children watching it. Mm-hmm. You know, probably not like six or seven-year-olds, but, you know, 12, when you're getting the teens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 phenomenal. Okay, Blade Runner. We have discussed, Yanni. I know you're not a fan. I love Blade Runner. I want Ridley to be Scott, a fan. Harrison Ford. Um, I think that movie is one of the best science fiction movies of all time. Have you seen it? No. Really? You mm-hmm. haven't seen Blade Runner? Oh my God. Here you we go again. You haven't seen it? I it's a classic. I haven't seen it. Okay, so um, <laughs> they're doing Blade Runner 2049. What's with, it even about? What? Brad, well, what? it's a sequel 30 years later uh-huh. with um, Harrison Ford uh, reprising his role as Rick Deckard and then Ryan Gosling is in it. And well, Jared I'll Leto. I'll definitely see it then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Those so two heavy hitters, I'll <laughs> see it. Apparently the buzz for it is very strong. I'm very excited. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Good. Um, look, I, I, I recommend the original. It's a very atmospheric, eerie Sci-fi, kind of movie. Eerie, weird. Um, I, I love that movie. Yeah. Um, I've seen okay. things you people wouldn't believe. It's got this amazing speech <laughs> um, from Rodka Hauer, who plays the, the villain. Okay, uh, Back to the Future. Yes. Of one of the best movies of all time one and one of the most of feel-good, rewatchable yeah. movies. Now, the whole trilogy is great, but the but first the one first is yeah. near damn perfect. Yeah. Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, that's Robert Zemeckis, mm-hmm. uh, produced, I think, by uh, um, Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, I mean, man, what a great film. I, I, like I can everything watch that, about that film. over and over. So I have watched it. I'm, that's one I've seen a hundred times. It's also one of the films I remember watching in the theater. Yeah. So that has such a magical experience. I remember watching that when <laughs> it came out. I was born when that came I know, out. <laughs> that's how old. That, when did it come out? Like 1984? 85. Yeah, oh, so wow. I was like eight. I, I watched it in the theater and it was just an experience. And I've seen it a hundred times. Uh, my wife loves it. So we rewatched the whole trilogy. Um, I, again, they're all great. But the, the first one is just a classic. Uh, the Breakfast Club. Oh, Brilliant that's a movie. John Hughes classic. Ugh. That film is so much smarter than a lot of people realize. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, on so many levels. Yeah. The, the, you know, look, I love the movie, the soundtrack. Don't you forget yeah. about me. But the di- I know. I can't <laughs> stop. <laughs> can't stop. Your Won't singing stop. just makes me smile. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good thing then. <laughs> great. Um, I think the dialogue in that oh, film yeah. is incredible. Uh, it's just got some. Inc- Here's what's funny of a about The Breakfast Club. That movie kind of shouldn't work if you think about it. It's a bunch of kids who just are in detention, in detention all day. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of talking, but it's so well done. Yeah. Um, you know, um, one of the original Brat Pack yeah. movies. Yeah. Um, Molly Ringwald. At yeah. One of the finest. Stop yeah. plots in there. So many Emilio Estevez. Uh, Jed anyway, Nelson. Yeah, it's a great, great movie. Um, I consider it one of those. It's John Hughes's best, and it's absolutely a classic. And it's, it's a, you know, it's, Anyway, it's I'm almost It's speechless. timeless, and please yeah. don't ever touch that film. Oh my oh God. God! See, if someone tries to remake that, Listening I to your will last go ape Episode shit. Yeah. of remakes and whatever. Please, that movie, yeah. just don't touch I it. I would boycott. I that. hope that sign <laughs> was loud <laughs> enough. We would pick it with a sign and be like, "Are you kidding me?" It right still now? works. So it, it still works. It's a movie I watch every year. It's yeah. it's phenomenal. Um, okay, so the Princess Bride. Uh, okay, so number one, we all love that movie. I did that in an early episode. <laughs> inconceivable, <laughs> as you wish. So many great lines. Yeah. You know, Mowage. Mowage is what brings us together Hello. today. My name is Inigo Montoya. Montoya. You, you killed, killed my, my father. father. Prepare, Prepare to, to die. die. So let me tell you something that's really interesting. And I posted this on the Tony and the Movie Guy Facebook page. Yeah. Um, at one of the festival circuits recently, it's the 30th anniversary of The Princess Bride. Today. So they interviewed yeah. all oh. these actors and actresses who are promoting their movies, like Jake Gyllenhaal mm-hmm. and Emma Stone, all these. And everyone quoted different parts of it different you know would you like a peanut you know all these different <laughs> oh, yeah. anecdotes stop rhyming and i mean it <laughs> and it was just such a perfect example yeah. of 
what makes a film a classic. Yeah. It's so Absolutely. beloved. Everyone lit up. Everyone knew it. Everyone remembered certain different parts. Um, so anyway, that film yeah. is so Timeless. fun. Um, I, I Again, I watched it when it came out. Love I, it. I love it. I it's happy fantastic. anniversary, I saw Princess that, Bride. I saw that this year in an outdoor movie. Aww. So it was yeah. so Yeah, happy wonderful. anniversary. Yeah, yeah, so you've got to watch it. It's a great movie. Okay, The Goonies. I watched that in, in the theater. I love Chunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> so I watched The Goonies again in the cinema when it came out. And it was that film... I mean, again, you could kind of rewatch it and think maybe it's a bit corny. Oh my god, it's it's, to me, it's timeless. So you know, wonderful. it's fantastic. It's little Sean Austin. It's uh, Josh Brolin as his yeah. brother. Um, Corey, oh, back in the day. I think that's Corey Feldman or as well. Feldman. Yeah, Corey Feldman no, it's as Feldman. well. Yeah. You know, um, oh, it's it's, it's such an amazing movie. Uh, it's got short round in it, but he plays Data mm, in the yeah, yeah. He's in Indiana Jones and yeah. in the yeah. Temple of Doom as uh, yeah. short round. Anyway, it's such a an adventurous film that was a film that when I was a kid like that would make my imagination oh, run yeah. wild I'd want to run off and go on an adventure yeah. you know Find what I mean treasure. it was yeah, I used to have you know dreams of like there was a sand pit down by a field and I'd have dreams they almost like I thought they were true where I would dig into the sand pit and then underneath was this whole world with like these damsels in distress that I would go and save. <laughs> and no, no, I was like, so I was maybe nine or something. So the next morning I went down there with a shovel and I started digging, oh, wow. thinking I could get underneath. And obviously oh, there was nothing Tony. there. Yeah. <laughs> I was disappointed. So disappointed. But, um, <laughs> that film is magical. So I absolutely, so magical. I love it. So we, we all agree on yep. that, obviously. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, E.T., of course. Yeah. Beautiful movie. I just watched Young it Drew again. Young Drew Barrymore. I just rewatched oh. that I love too. that movie. It, it's it's so just great. such a beautiful... It's Steven Spielberg. It's such a beautiful Amazing. film. And to me, it really holds up. And uh, when... Actually, it's funny. When you rewatch it now, it's there's very curious ways that Spielberg shot it. Like, I don't know if you notice... As a kid, I didn't notice at all. But mm -hmm. he shoots the whole first portion of that movie never showing the, the, the adult's... Tops. You you never see their faces and mm. heads apart from maybe the mother. Yeah, from the kids' perspective. From the kids' perspective. Mm -hmm. So anyway, a beautiful yeah, I never film. That. I yeah, should absolutely it. fantastic. I've completely forgotten the the main kids. Oh, Henry Thomas. So his performance as well is fantastic as a child actor. Yeah. Still, it just holds up. I saw his audition video, which he was picked amazing? immediately. It was incredible. Yeah, and Drew Barrymore incredible. was adorable, but he Henry. That's what really like. Uh, impressed me watching that again. He is incredible in it. Anyway, that film is such a feel-good classic yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, okay, Ghostbusters. I love <laughs> Ghostbusters. Bill who Murray. Who are you going to call? That was it. Yeah, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Okay. I, I can't stop. I'm sorry. So Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, um, Dan Aykroyd. Mm -hmm. Wonderful film. Total classic. Um, it is a classic. And I, look, I will admit, it, Sigourney Weaver as well is great in it. That film doesn't hold up so well in some of the effects yeah, and sure. things like that. But it's still, but it's still very it's enjoyable. It's a classic. It yeah. fits you know? the category. And it's got that great line. What's he say? Um, is it true? Yes, it is true. This man has no penis <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> great, some great one-liners right. in it from Bill Murray. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move through this. Uh, okay, so The Terminator. To me, that's absolutely the a classic. Terminator. I don't, have you guys have seen The Terminator? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so here's one thing that really stays in my memory. I watched that movie way too young, and I remember getting in trouble for watching that movie. Because mm -hmm. I must have been like maybe six or seven. Oh, wow. Um, and I found it very disturbing when I watched it young. And then, um, you know, obviously I've seen it many times since then. Uh, I think it's fantastic. It brought the world Arnold Schwarzenegger in a big way. He had done Conan the Barbarian before that, but, you know, it, great movie. Linda Hamilton, Linda Hamilton. Michael Bean, uh, James Cameron. Uh, to me, it's a, a science fiction classic, and obviously it brought the world I'll be back, you know, but that's a great Hasta movie. La vista, yeah. baby. Now, I think the sequel is actually superior, um, but I still love the first yeah. movie. Um, okay, good. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yep. Oh, that's on I love list. that you movie. Left that's that out? on oh, my yes. list. No, I did not leave it out. Okay, it's so on there. That film is Another beautiful. Another John Hughes film. I love it. So it's John Hughes, Matthew Broderick. Um, I can't remember the actor's name who plays Cameron, his best Alan friend. Ruck. Alan Ruck. Alan Ruck. That's yeah. right. I love his character. Yeah. Uh, that film is very um, heartwarming, actually. It's mm -hmm. funny, but it's, it's got scenes that are very sentimental. And mm -hmm. like the whole breakdown he has at the end with his father's car. Yeah. Man, it gets me every time. Yeah. Like it's it really very does. moving. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I love that movie. It's I don't know if we need to say more about it. Um, you know, oh, and it's got my favorite line in it. Um, 
which I've totally forgotten. <laughs> yeah, no, he has a famous line from that movie is, um, okay, I'll do it another episode. <laughs> Maybe you can look it up for me. The, the quote from... Um, the living too fast. Yeah. Too yeah, sometimes life moves too fast. Anyway, I ruined it. But it's, <laughs> it's a great line from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, I'll move on. Okay, Platoon. Have you seen that? No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Platoon doesn't hold up as well because I watched it last year. It's Oliver Stone. He won Best Picture. It's Vietnam War. Charlie Sheen. William Dafoe. Uh, Tom Berenger. Excellent movie. Johnny Depp's in it and one of his youngest roles. It's a war movie. Um, no, but we it's... haven't seen like all the war yeah. movies. I've noticed that. <laughs> well, it's, again, it's wonder... two ladies and a guy. That's okay. So maybe, you know, maybe someone has a point that I should bring on another guy at some point. But it's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> Possibly. Um, okay, next I have Die Hard. Oh, of course. Yes. Um, okay, so Die Hard Classic. is considered like the best action movie also of all time. Also known as a Christmas movie. Yeah, which is considered yeah, it. Yeah, all based movie. on Christmas. Uh, and it's considered the greatest action movie of all time, and I would actually I agree. It. It's, um, it's also just a great film. Bruce Willis Phenomenal. is amazing in it, and oh my God, Alan Rickman Incredible. gives one of the best villainous roles oh, I ever. I love Alan Rickman. I know. So Rest good. in peace. Uh, anyway, that film is so good, and uh, I love it. Not much movie. more to say. Okay, so this is actually my personal favorite movie of all time, mm. uh, Dead Poet Society. Unbelievable. Okay, um, now, funny you bring that up. I just saw that because you posted something about it, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago. I had never seen it. Are you serious? I didn't never make you watch it. that? <gasps> no. It's a classic. I, <laughs> I can't believe it. So I've seen it. Did you like it? Loved it. Yeah. Heartbreaking, though. Oh, my Heartbreaking. God. Yeah. So it's directed by uh, Peter Weir, who's an Australian director who I actually love. He's done some great films, but uh, for whatever reason, hasn't done a lot recently. Um, it's got Ethan Hawke, very young in it. All of these guys uh, are very Robin young Robin Williams in it. is fantastic. Phenomenal. Robert Sean Leonard uh, mm -hmm. plays the kid who commits suicide. Oh, my God, that scene. Mm -hmm. Again, spoilers. So, it's like 30 years old. Yeah. I, I love this movie. Obviously, it's it's very famous for Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. Oh, Captain, um, My Captain. Yeah, Oh, Captain, oh, Captain My Captain. Captain. The end that, scene that is scene fantastic. Is, when they stand I, I on the table. I just thinking about that one scene. Mm. It's I, incredible. So I've seen it 100 times. It, it's a film that moves me to my core yeah. and I'm welling up even thinking about it every time I watch yeah. it. I don't, it has such a profound effect on yeah. me, which is why I always rank it as my favorite movie yeah. of all time. I, I love it. And Robin Williams is fantastic. Again, the, the Robert Sean Leonard, he went on to star in, um, I think, Bones. Or, okay. No, not Bones. Uh, the one with Hugh Laurie. Um, House. Oh, House. He was in all the seasons of okay. House. Uh, I I don't know why he didn't have a bigger uh, career as an actor in mm -hmm. mainline films. Oh, man, he's phenomenal. And Ethan, Ethan Hawke, I fell in love with Ethan Hawke from yeah. that film. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen Dead Poets Society, go and watch Please it. Please see it. And it's, one it's thing. It's a beautiful film. Having seen it recently, it definitely holds up for me. Absolutely. I was like, wow. Yeah. And I couldn't That's believe good. I hadn't yeah. seen it earlier, but yeah. definitely holds up. And it's also a good example, because I know a lot of the movies I've gone over are quite rough and solemn. Mm -hmm. It's a movie that's quite heartbreaking, but ultimately is very, very inspiring and uplifting. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I, I did put for the ladies Dirty Dancing. Of course. Look, Nobody I, puts baby in a corner. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I love that it movie. It is a classic. I, I love it. I've though, seen it, it many is. times. Great soundtrack. Jennifer Grey. Uh, Patrick Swayze, uh, the music's phenomenal, uh, the dancing, the story. It, it's just, it's a great coming of age movie and it is a great film. It yeah. is. And uh, did I make you watch that with me for the first time or had you already seen that, babe? Um, I haven't seen it. I don't know if I watched it with you or if I watched it with any of them. Anyway, she, lo she loves it and uh, we bought the Blu-ray. I think I've seen that movie 20 times from um, start to end. It's charming. Yeah. It, Holds your attention. It's a it's a, it's a great film, it's, yeah. and I I really do consider it a classic. Okay, I have um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, of obviously. <laughs> so that's Harrison Ford. That brought the world. Indiana Jones, um, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg. Uh, the film's fantastic. It's one of the greatest adventures, and you know I love Temple of Doom. Yeah. I love The Last Crusade. I think Last I, Crusade is actually my favorite. It is. It is actually. I actually agree. The third one is my favorite. The first one started it all yeah um and then we you know will not talk about uh you no, know kingdom of the exist. crystal skull or whatever that, <laughs> that is me vomiting into yeah. the mic okay um they let's were actually see. they were talking about that on movie fights and yeah. they kept saying that that movie that shall not be named <laughs> well here's the funny thing there are certain parts of that movie that are enjoyable okay but overall it's a disaster it was hokey and terrible yeah okay good so i mentioned alien uh i have aliens to me that's a mm -hmm. far superior 
film. The I, second one. I love Aliens. It's directed by James Cameron. It's one of the few examples of a sequel that exceeds expectations and I consider yeah. better than the original. Um, and Sigourney Weaver just kicks ass. Right, as it, Ripley, so. she cements her status <laughs> as one of the best female action heroes of all time. It, it's a, it's a, such a great movie and you have little Newt who, oh, the little yeah, girl, yeah. Uh, I love that movie. And, I don't think oh, I've seen the second one. And what's his name? Bill Paxton. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Bill Paxton, game over, man, game over. <laughs> anyway, rest in peace. I don't think I've seen it. You to have list. to watch it. It's great. Good. Yeah. It's more an action thriller than a horror. The first one's yeah. more kind of <laughs> spooky. Um, okay, and then my, uh, I've only got two more in the 80s. Um, I have Raging Bull. So you guys haven't probably seen haven't seen nope. that. It's Martin Scorsese. That's considered to be uh, one of Robert De Niro's finest performances. He plays a real-life boxer called Jake Lee Mutter, who, uh, coincidentally enough, just died, actually, last week. Um, that film is incredible for its acting performance. Um, you know, and the cinematography is incredible. Um, it definitely left an impression on me. I don't know how rewatchable it is, but De Niro is phenomenal. He won an Oscar for it. Okay, we're going to go into the 90s. Okay, I have Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino. It's one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, that movie is so rewatchable to me. Um, it, the performances are incredible. It obviously uh, brought John Travolta back into the limelight. He was incredible in that movie. Incredible, uh, but all the performances, I think, are incredible. Have yeah. you guys seen Pulp Fiction? Yeah, of course. Of course. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so it was so um, kind of groundbreaking for its time in in terms of the storytelling and how kind of crazy it was. I love that movie. Brilliant. You know, soundtrack too. The soundtrack oh, was amazing. God, uh, whose so trapper good. is this? You know, uh, it's Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's <laughs> dead. Um, yeah, I've got a bit more to go on this, so we'll just go over time a bit. I know if you guys are concerned about the time, but let's no, just go through I'm the good. list and finishing it. I'm enjoying myself, so hopefully the listeners are too. Um, okay, so Pulp Fiction. I mean, I think that everyone's seen that movie. It, it's absolutely a classic, and I still consider it Tarantino's best movie. Um, and even though it's very long, it's two and a half, almost three hours long, it's so rewatchable. In my well, and the thing is, I didn't even notice how long it was. It, that yeah. was not even a concern when yeah. I watched it. And it was one of the first films that had the whole disjointed storyline. It's so out of order. And, you know, but the whole introduction with Tim yeah. Roth is amazing. And Samuel L. Jackson's yeah. incredible with his whole, you know, Ezekiel 27, <laughs> the path of the righteous man. And anyway, I love that movie to pieces okay good so one of my personal favorite movies of all time it would definitely be in my top five is Shawshank Redemption Tim yeah. Robbins oh, yeah Frank Darabont Morgan Freeman yeah Morgan you know Freeman. he plays Red you gotta what is it you gotta get busy living or get busy dying yeah. um, so that's another adaption of a Stephen King book um, oh, I didn't know yeah that. yeah so uh, that film is I mean oh my god it's it's such a classic movie you watch that yeah that's another one years. that holds up I think I, I just saw it <clears throat> what was the last month Oh, well. And I think I've seen it a total of like 17 times. And it's a beautiful movie. And here's the funny thing. Tim Robbins is an actor that I haven't seen most of his work, but he's done certain films that I just love him in. And I'm, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Anyway, if you haven't seen Shawshank Redemption, I, that's a film I think that when that movie came out, it was a bomb. Just so you know, it was what? a bomb. Oh, wow. I cannot imagine that. film that. now is considered one of the greatest movies of all time, mainly from just... Oh, wow. Cable, just repeat oh, viewings man. during the day, and it's become one of the best films of all time, it's and rightly so, happens. rightly Amazing. so. Such a good storyline. Yeah, it's a beautiful film, mm. and yeah, Morgan Freeman is phenomenal in it. So um, okay, Goodfellas. I touched upon that. That's my favorite mob movie of all time. Scorsese, personally, I was mentioning in an early episode how Scorsese won for The Departed, the best mm-hmm. picture. He should have won for Goodfellas. Kevin Costner won for Dances with Wolves, oh. which, I'm sorry, is such a long overblown film it's not bad uh but that was that was uh anyway i'm speechless uh scorsese should have won for goodfellas it's one of the best mobster movies ever de niro joe pesci you know funny funny how funny how it's got that (laughs) whole thing um it's got so many uh, the the soundtrack so many great lines um ray liotta yeah his big breakout Mm -hmm. movie fantastic film even if you're not a fan of mob movies you have to watch goodfellas it's it's just fantastic yeah okay next is silence of the lambs Ooh. i mean that's one of the oh that my is God. a classic that people. film is a classic it's 
terrible oh. as I, I You've seen it, right? Finished it. I, I twice watched it in the middle and got interrupted, and I'm, I'm like, it's, it, I'm watching it this week. Oh Tony's eyes today. just got God. really round when he heard that. And I love thrillers, <laughs> and I love horrors, and that is a, a very famous on the list yeah. of horror. Was she, thrillers. was she a big fat person? Oh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> would you fuck me? Oh. I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me good. Okay, this just became R-rated. Whoa. But anyway, you, you just what? that was three in a row. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just so you know, it had to be done. You have to watch Silence oh, of the Lambs. Oh, Here's the thing about that movie. It's very twisted. It's a, like a psychological thriller. It's amazing. And I, it's really, that's where I do say, and I hear myself yeah. saying, it's a classic. <laughs> it, Ant- yeah. Anthony Hopkins uh, as Hannibal Lecter, yeah. the greatest villain of yeah. all time. He won the Oscar. You know, he's in that film for about 15, 20 minutes of screen time. All wow. together, yeah, wow. Yeah, all together. And then Jodie Foster um, as Clara Sterling or whatever her name is. I love Jodie uh, Clarice. Uh, Clarice, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah um, I had it with some flava beans. and Anyway, I can't remember. But <laughs> that, that film is, it's very disturbing. It's brilliant in terms of acting. It's incredible. Um, and the guy who played Buffalo uh, Bill, of, you know, the main antagonist, is also incredible in it as well. He kind of got overshadowed by Hopkins, but oh my God. No, he, he does a good job in it. Oh, he's amazing. Um, anyway, so that film has to be seen. Um, okay, good. So I have Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, I'll try and go through this a bit faster, but look, I'll just tell you, I mean, that movie, I love. I watched it when it came out. Edward Furlon was so great on it as the kid, as John Connor. That's the one I remember always. It's so sad. That's the one I remember. Yeah, that kid, his life, his life crumbled to drugs, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. so you don't really see him much, but that film, and it was such a genius idea to make Arnold Schwarzenegger as the, you know, the, the Terminator, make him the protagonist. The good guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that good. metal melty guy. Oh, yeah. The, the metal the, melty guy. The, so the, the T-1000. <laughs> the T whatever. Anyway, the <laughs> actor did a great job with yeah. his, and he Patrick, also had uh, the yeah. steel I remember his name. piercing um, blue eyes. Yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah. The whole film was great. Um, and here's the thing. I mean, the ending was truly moving to me. I was crying my eyes out when you know he puts his thumb up and because he he has to kill himself spoilers you know because he's the last terminator he has to wipe out all the evidence and then click yeah Mm -hmm. and it brought the world hasta la vista baby and you know everyone wanted their hair like edward furlong (laughs) anyway it's a a great movie james cameron so So what's funny is james james cameron directed the two sequels aliens and t2 that i consider uh exceeded and were far more superior than the originals um which is kind of an interesting fact. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, I have Titanic. I mean, of that <laughs> not was, much has to yeah. be said. I, Leo, I, Kate. Yeah, yeah, Kate Winslet, Leo, Leo DiCaprio, James Cameron. Here's a funny anecdote. Um, I made my wife watch that movie the first time two years ago because she's young. It was really entertaining because she was like, Jack, hold on. Oh no, what's going to happen? Is he okay? And it was so oh, cute. because she didn't know. She hadn't seen it before. Oh, she didn't Danny. know the story. And I've seen it many times. I saw it in the theater and it is a great movie. It's a wonderful I, film. I know some people don't consider it that great anymore. Some people unfortunately do. Uh, most, all the girls are looking at me like, what? Because what? women love it. Um, but actually I still think it's a, it's just a grand epic movie and the chemistry between uh, Leo oh, and yeah. Kate is yeah. undeniable. And also it's so lovely, their relationship, how it's bloomed. They're so close. Um, and also, kudos to Billy Zane. Yeah. He is fantastic yeah. in that amazing. movie. Agreed? And, uh, I agree. It touches on that uh, exact point of rewatchability so much. I have seen that film at least 15 and or 20 And it's like four times. hours long. <laughs> and just from the, the production value, the music, the costumes, they put so much in to make that film incredibly beautiful. I will rewatch it. I'll rewatch it a bunch. Ever, but ever, it's ever. so frustrating too, no, the end. I, I just, I watch it, but I still feel very frustrated. Yeah, yeah. but it makes but. that realism. That's that's the thing. And they do, do a nice job of still making it good that they meet in whatever heaven that is or what, you know, in her dreams. Or So here's what I think we're going to do, ladies. I think we're going to take a break and we'll do part two. We'll do two episodes. Sound, Sound good. good. All right, don't take go anywhere, five. listeners. Go have a cigarette. The girls can have some wine. I'm going to have some whiskey and uh, we'll come back and do it. The second part of this episode, okay? Hasta la vista. I'll be back.
Thank you so much for listening to Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast, episode five, part one on classics. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tony the Movie Guy. And also email us in at Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com. Also, I want to remind you all to share, rate, and review our podcast. We would love more listeners just like you, so please help us promote it. So stay tuned for part two of Tony the Movie Guy Classics.